back to later folks jeff and officer greg out here with you on a bright uh, central california COVID day hey uh we're bringing you something a little cool today remember sar tall he sent some uh he's a viewer who's made some candy rounds and some other things that he's cooked up in his shop sar has designed a, a round made out of sorbitol sorbitol is a laxative and sorbitol sounds a whole, whole lot like sar tall so i think there's some uh some insider trading going on there uh, before Jeff started rolling the camera, I popped a couple of these to see if they really were a laxative. And you can tell over there that uh, that big sump was empty when we started. So, in fact, they do work. So I'm not recommending you guys take any of these things. Instead, we're going to put them in the uh, mass accelerator tube. We're going to mass accelerate them downrange here against a target and see what they do. See if they hold together coming out of the barrel. See if they hold together after they've hit the steel and some other uh, targets we've got out here and just see uh, if you would be interested in a laxative round <laughs> and where we're going to mass accelerate this into you. All right, so without further ado, let's get to it. I told you I don't believe in firearms. You will. You can you know, aim at that little dot thingy. Yeah. The mass accelerator needs to be charged here. It's <laughs> trying to take... When you're ready. I'm ready. Huh. I think it stayed together. Wow. All right, Sar, that thing held together. We're both kind of shocked. I, didn't, I thought they were going to be too brittle. Yeah. And no, shatter yeah. in the barrel, and we'd have to reduce the power uh, from the mass accelerator. So you can see it left a little uh, residue right there and hit a little low, which is consistent for lightweight rounds like that. No, it's not. They usually go high. Lightweight rounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The heavy ones cause a kind of a weird I think they're not on the barrel only. harmonics where the barrel kind of warps. It does, I, I'm telling they're you. They're not the only thing that's high out here, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> you saw it hit just a little bit low from the uh, from the impact point, but we were rather surprised that it uh, held together. I, I, I was definitely surprised. And this, this is going to be a good day now. I, I was like, man, what are we going to... I was telling Greg, uh, what are we going to do for plan B if, he was gonna if these don't work? The, you know, I have to go back the, to dr the drawing board and... and, and so that's good. Yeah, Jeff was going to shoot through the uh, windshield of my truck if we didn't have if we didn't have anything else to shoot. So. Yeah, we're going to do some radar R stuff or yeah. a full meg. You know, he wanted me to wear only a shirt out here <laughs> while shooting, which I thought was a little unusual. So I'm glad these rounds have held together. Let's give them another try on some other targets. Okay, let's review what happened using the Kronos high speed camera. Look how stable that slug is. Not only did it hold together under nearly 10,000 g's of acceleration. It actually flew very well aerodynamically. Big surprise, I, again, I'm wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Let's see if it'll go through a two by four, which isn't actually two by four. One and a half by three and two and a half. half, three and a half. Three, three and a half. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's crazy. It used to be made two by four back Fake in the old days. News. That's when houses were bigger, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. On the nose. I'm going to accelerate them right on the nose. Okay, I got you. I'm ready. Here we go. Take a look at that. First of all, I was trying to hit down here, so clearly that didn't work. The thing broke apart, went in two different places. But That was what I, what, you know, the little cavity put in there. Yeah, isn't that cool? Which you, you can, can actually see. You can actually see a picture of it right there. Yeah. That cavity I was that worried that would be a weak point. It's like a fossil, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool for a block of wood. Yeah. Calibrated wood. It is FBI calibrated. <laughs> in test number two, this gives you an idea of just how fragile these are. It actually split in half. I, I predicted they would just completely shatter, so it was kind of a surprise to me that it only split in half. But as you can see, because of that, uh, it really lost a lot of its uh, force and power and all that didn't do a lot of damage to the wood. Oh, I don't know. What is that target? That's a Mandalorian. Oh, okay. Um, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I don't keep up. I don't it. know. I don't have Disney Plus. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. What are you aiming for? Uh, I'm going to aim for... I'm got my red dot on his mouth. Okay. One of these went high, one went low, so who knows. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, whoa.
this guy who was stuck on top, look at that. Cut a nice little half circle right through it. It looked like it was flying nice and true. I, I could, that one was was backwards, by the way. I was aiming for the mouth. That was a backwards one, so it was like a hollow point. All right, this thing was basically a foam stress ball, real soft material. Really interesting reaction there, though. Now, one notable thing here is it never released from the sable over the wad. I don't think it was stuck in there. I think is because both the wad and the projectile were both relatively lightweight. So with all things being relatively equal, they just more or less flew together as one unit. How about a funky old cell phone? Is that 5G? I, I think it's it's 12G. 12G? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. G. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, that one's shattered. Wow, yeah. No. You ready? I'm ready. There you go. Well, it knocked all five of the G's out of this phone, <laughs> right there out of the side. You can see where they came out. So it flew sideways, you said, and then it smashed. Yeah, it was kind of tumbling around. Smashed. I don't think it released from its uh, shot cup thingy. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> got my digis right in there. Did, did it like delaminate the phone? Turn it sideways. It oh, look at that. Delaminated. <laughs> oh my God. I think it's ready to burst on fire. Be oh, careful that's there. That's fun. Yeah. So take this on board an airplane. No. <laughs> okay. Well, at least, at least like you a, hit it. Almost looks like a flip phone from the side now. Yeah. It's going to fold in it. <laughs> Banana those, phone. It's one of those new folding phones they came out with at the Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, yeah. It's a folding phone. That's what we need. It works just about as good as those folding phones did, too. <laughs> yep. Well, I was actually wrong with my initial analysis about it flying sideways. What we see here is something even more interesting. This thing is on the verge of going subsonic. We'll often see oscillations like that as the projectile is stabilized by its own shock wave. But as it nears subsonic speeds, the angle of the shock wave opens up and becomes weaker and the projectile oscillates much greater. Want to try it? Whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> We're here with Jeff's clear-ish ballistic gel. It's, it's not sort, that bad. It's sort of getting foggy over here. <laughs> it's getting a little cloudy. That chance, stuff is a pain in the butt to deal with. Chance of rain. It's holding up though, uh, consistency wise. Yeah, I could tell on the high speed camera that it broke apart and, and multiple pieces struck it. Ooh. Can you see where the multiple pieces struck it? Well, right here on the end, you can kind of see some anomalies. It's tough to tell with all the other anomalies. In oh, now the sun comes out. There we go. Thank you, son. <laughs> Good timing. It's like the Navy popping out when we're ready to film. Yeah. But the pieces that hit, that hit did maybe penetrated one inch at the most. Now this test is actually out of sequence. This was the last test. We didn't have any more projectiles to test. Otherwise, we would have done it again. But even so, you can imagine how shallow this lightweight, very frangible projectile would have done with the gel, just going in maybe a couple inches. Okay, we'll let go through the aluminum plate. Charger dish or whatever you fell off the stool. Where, where are you aiming? I'm going to aim right there where it says accelerate here. That big dot maybe? <laughs> the big dot. Okay, gotcha. That's I'm ready. This is a backwards one. I'm ready. Wow. Oh yeah. That's, That's hard to believe that something that light could go right through that. That's yeah. amazing. Pretty accurate. <laughs> I didn't think it would go through that. Yeah, that's kind of impressive. Yeah. That sorbitol isn't very strong. And that plate's pretty pretty strong. You couldn't shoot a BB gun through that. Folks, ask your doctor if sorbitol is right for you. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's never right. In this test, the projectile is traveling about Mach 1.3. Yes, we did see a little bit of oscillation, but it was much less than with the, uh, the shot on the phone. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please comment if you have any questions. We'll try to answer them. 
Always appreciate when you rate the video, good or bad, it's up to you. We want to thank our channel members and also our Patreon supporters for sticking with us. And just a quick note of what's going on with the YouTube algorithm and the reviewers and all that. It's an absolute crapshoot whenever we show firearms in a video. While we're 100% sure that we're following the rules, when they demonetize a video and review it, they never tell us what we did wrong. It's like getting pulled over by a cop, given a ticket, but they never tell you what you did wrong. Now since I'm in the self-certification program, which many channels are not, when I upload a video I fill out a questionnaire saying that we're abiding by all their rules. The person doing the reviewing may not agree with me and basically call me a liar that I falsified the document. Now I have no idea how many warnings I can get before they completely demonetize or delete my channel. They won't tell me that either.